talking about this position vector in more detail. This position vector r is basically a vector that is x i plus y j plus k, uh, z times k. It is a vector that identifies location. Assuming we live in a three-dimensional spatial world, we could identify it that way. If we were to, for example, live in a 10 or 11 dimensional world, we could just add letters, right? Right? So it's relatively easy to presuppose that we live in a 10 or 11 dimensional world. And that we're all just vibrating strings in a 10 or 11 dimensional world. Mathematically, it all makes sense. Physically, I don't know. I gotta, I've got some issues with that, but that's okay. But mathematically, all you have to do is add more unit vectors in various dimensions. Right. So we have, just as we walk through, delta r, which is going to be the final minus the initial position vector. So notice that rather than having just an x position or a y position or a z position, we have combined them all into one vector, the position vector r. So we can have something called delta r over delta t. Delta r over delta t. What would that be called? Andrew? Velocity. Your car loan? Yeah. Okay, good. That works out well for me. Okay, Andrew? Like velocity? Yes. I need a little more. What type of velocity would this be, Heather? Velocity in space. Uh, assuming we were talking, yes, but that's not quite what I'm going for. That's it, Jeff. This would be the average velocity. We could also have dr dt. Which would be what, Jessica? Instantaneous velocity. This would be the velocity instantaneous. Perfect. And of course, we could then have um, dv dt and delta v over delta t as well. So let's walk through an example using the position vectors. Problem 6, chapter 4. described the position of an object, but we did it only as a position in, say, the x direction or the position in the y direction. But here, we're describing it in both the x and y direction. We have an x, y plane here. We're describing it in both at the same time. So we should be able to figure out the velocity as a function of time. Um, oh, darn it. Minji, what, uh, how do we figure out the velocity as a function of time? Okay, so first of all, we have to write down the expression, which is r equals 3.0 i minus 6.0 t squared j. And then, I'm guessing that you have to do the thing where Psst, shh, don't guess. <laughs> OK, so i is going to be 0. What are we doing, though, when you say i is 0? Remember, just tell me how we figure out the velocity as a function of time. 
Okay, so you have to kind of do it. Do you want to go for what? I don't know how to say it. I know, see, that's the thing. And being able to say it is very important. And you will hear me stress over and over again being able to say all of the physics terms, right? Because if you say it, you understand it. If you could say it, you can understand it much better. Okay? So just walk me through it. What are you trying to do? Okay. So you find the derivative of R. What is R represent? Uh, the uh, displacement. No. The delta R would be the displacement. What does R represent, Carlon? R represents position. Position. Okay. So the derivative of position. DT. What does that mean, over dt? With time. What is with time? You're missing two words in there. Uh, Landon, what two words is she missing? Uh, derivative of t. See, it's the wor these words are very important, and you're, you're missing them. Okay? She'll be. With respect. With respect to time. Okay? This is the dr dt means the derivative of position, because r is our position vector, with respect to time. Because what you're taking the derivative of is important. That's the r. But also what you're taking with respect to is also important. Because we're not always going to be taking the derivative with respect to time. Right? We do at the beginning. We start out that way. But when we get farther into this class, we realize we don't always take the derivative with respect to time. So we're taking the derivative with respect to time of 3i minus 6t squared j. Okay. So um, we have to assume that there's a uh, t to the 0 power for 3i. Sure. So the first one will be 0. I'm going to put 0i just to be absolutely clear. Good. Keep going. Okay, and then there's a uh, t squared, so it's going to be uh, 12tj. So the velocity is a function of time when g is equal to? Uh, negative 12 TJ, and then would it be meters per second? In meters per second, very close. Shelby. Velocity is a Ah, true velocity is a vector, not quite what I was going for, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, Carolyn. Negative 12 plus 0. Sig phase. We started with 3. Our answer needs to have 3. 12.0. So the velocity as a function of time is negative 12.0 tj in the quantities r meters per second. The acceleration as a function of time. How are we going to figure that out? Mr. Reed. Uh, you take the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So I'm taking the derivative of the velocity, which was negative 12 ti. I'm sorry, negative 12 tj. Ah. Go ahead, James. And then that equals negative 12 tj. Well, just <laughs> <laughs> He's very close, Minji. Sig fig, wow. negative 12.0 <laughs> j meters per second squared. Goolsby, what type of motion is this? Um, it's okay, she's not seeing it. Help us out. What type of motion is this, J? UAM, uniformly accelerated motion. You know this because what, Stephanie? Because the acceleration is a constant. It's equal to a number. That number is negative 12 j meters per second squared. You should have known this actually at the very beginning. How did you know this at the very beginning? Rick? T is a power less than or equal to 2. As long as t does not exceed 2, the power of t, of t does not exceed 2, then it is going to be uniformly accelerated motion. Great. Uh, we can figure out the position at one or the position at, or the velocity at one and the acceleration at one. That's relatively simple. We just go through and use these equations. So for example, we could do the velocity at one second is going to be equal to negative 12.0 times one. 
j, and so our velocity at one second is negative 12.0 j meters per second. Our acceleration at one second, you know this, Landon, it is? Negative 12.0 You know this because? Oh, it's constant. It doesn't change, right? So the time doesn't matter at all. So I'm not even going to do that because that is our answer for both part A and for part B. All right. UAM. Uniformly accelerated motion. We have various equations as one example, position final equals position initial plus velocity initial times t plus one half acceleration times t squared. Well, that would be all in the x direction. Oh, actually, let me remind me. Uh, what do we assume about time in this equation? Just to review for a moment here. What do we assume about time? Wait. Just notice that we don't have a delta t, we have a t because they assume that time initial is equal to zero in this equation. So this would just be in the x direction. But we could also do position final equals position initial plus velocity initial times t plus 1 half times acceleration times t squared, where all of these are vectors instead. So rather than doing it in just one direction, we could do it in 3 or 11 directions all at the same time. And you can do that with all four of the UAN equations. In order to understand what that means, which I know that's a little bit nebulous at the moment, we're actually going to walk through a problem to help us understand how to work with this. 